Welcome back to ACRP Bonsai. Today we have an unexpected episode. I just spent about an hour earning blisters digging this tree out of my neighbor's yard. A very well-meaning neighbor and they were worried that the roots of their maple tree were going to disrupt their back patio and the foundation of their house. Maple trees are actually fairly non-invasive as far as their root systems go but I can understand their concern. They've seen an issue with the maple tree in the past with one of their previous neighbors. Uh, of course, being a maple freak, I was like almost in tears and I immediately rushed over there, met them for the first time and said, can I please try to save that tree? So the goal of today's episode is to walk you through what we do when we try to save a chopped maple tree out of a landscape, a maple tree that's been tree murdered. The first thing I did after I was able to get it out of the ground was put it immediately into a bucket of water to start hydrating that root system. It's been in there for about a half an hour. We're going to pull the tree out of the water and do some really rudimentary root work so that we can get it into a pot. Probably the only good news associated with this tree getting cut down is the time of year. The absolute perfect time for this sort of operation would probably have been the end of May, but we're still in that time of year when the tree is ready to push a second flush and there's a very high likelihood that we can save it. So journey along with me. We're gonna get this tree cleaned up. We're gonna get it into some media. And I think we have about a 90% chance of saving this tree. Okay, so I didn't wanna bore you with all of the chopping and sawing, but as you can see, I've removed only these major roots. A few of these over here that were growing straight up, we had to take those back. The roots sometimes will grow straight up like that when the landscaper installing the tree will bury the tree you know six or eight inches below the soil surface when they should have buried it right at the nabari line this tree has some really amazing features it actually has roots growing radially all the way around the circumference of this tree there's actually kind of a nice flare coming off on this side so we have a really great possibility here this is a really great piece of material and has a lot of potential to become a future bonsai we're just going to need to do the work over the next few years to really get it into shape so the next thing we got to do here is we're going to put this stump back into our bucket of water and allow those roots to continue soaking make sure that this stump is well hydrated as i prepare my soil mix let's go ahead and top that off make sure that we're covering every last one of these roots here i want to give this tree every opportunity to bring back to life So as you can see, I'm mixing up a little soil here with maybe 70 or 80% perlite and just about 20% of that garden soil. So I'm gonna continue mixing this up and breaking up these chunks. One of the keys to success is immobilizing the tree in our garden can. We have to do that because as those new roots emerge, they are carrot stick fragile and we need to make sure that they remain undisturbed so that they can grow into healthy new roots. So we are very simply going to run a few wires through the drainage holes of this can. I'm going to grab all four of these wires. Essentially, we just want to bring the wires over the top. All right. So now our can is set. We'll add a little bit of soil to the bottom of our can. Like so. Form a small pyramid at the bottom. Now we'll nestle our new tree down into the soil. We're going to continue adding soil until we've added enough to bury the roots right at that Nabari line. If you follow along some of the legendary collectors like Backcountry Dan and Randy Knight, you probably know that they recommend using 100% pumice when they newly collect trees. Now that's going to be true for a lot of your high alpine trees and you're going to be doing that collecting in late winter, early spring. Since we had to do this emergency yardadori collection, in mid-June, this tree is going to need a little bit more water retention. Now, it's really dangerous on the roots if there's any water logging. Because it's midsummer, the temperatures are a lot hotter, and I have my busy work schedule. I need to make sure that there's going to be enough moisture in this can all day long for this tree. So the key here is going to be that I never overwater the tree. I'm going to be diligently checking the moisture level on this before I water. All right, so we're going to cross our wires here. All right, so I have my hand on the top of the stump. I'm gonna be pressing down, grab the wire with my gin pliers, and I'm gonna pull up and then twist. Pulling as hard as we can, pressing down with our opposite hand, continue twisting the slack out of that wire. 
Let's get our opposite wire over here. Get that started. Press down with our left hand and our opposite hand pull and twist. And this tree is securely attached to the can. It's not moving anywhere. I'm gonna do a little bit of chopsticking with our fingers to make sure the soil is well packed, maintaining good contact with all the roots. Trim the excess wire. And we will water it in. And before we go, I wanted to highlight a few areas of interest on the tree. While I was pulling it up, I did notice there were several buds right here of previous back budding. Everything above about here is that grafted wood. You can see the heavy lump at the graft union. Below that, I'm assuming we have a wild type Japanese maple. I don't know if it'll bud back here, but I'm fairly confident it'll either bud at this old branch here or possibly somewhere here at the top. I'm gonna to set this tree in the shade. I'm gonna make sure that it stays hydrated, but never overwater it. I wanna make sure that plenty of oxygen can penetrate down through that soil and up through the holes to maintain a perfect balance of water and oxygen around these roots. At this time of year, I have fairly high confidence that this tree is going to push additional growth. And as long as we can get a few healthy branches on this tree, I think we can save it.